Uh, I'd like to welcome back on stage uh, Laura, Danilo, Marie-Cécile, Dominique, and please take a seat. Make your, I'll take this one and then make yourself. You have um, your microphones on the seats, or some on some of the seats. I'll give you one, Marie-Cécile, one for you. There we go, and make yourself come. Thank you. So we actually have a first question here. Um, uh, I was looking at it, and it, it seems that we have someone in the room who might be able to, to take it, actually. It's a, it's a question about the economics of it. In addition to being a major health issue, AMR also has massive economic implications, uh, as we heard this morning from uh, uh, Dominic, uh, Mrs. Dominic Amado. The question is, what is the economic rationale for tackling AMR, and what are the most cost-effective options to scale up action? And I think this is actually a question for the O. ECD, and I believe we, I know I met Michele earlier, there he is, and I was thinking this is a question for you, Michele. Um, would you mind, maybe someone bring him a microphone and, um, and maybe introduce yourself, Michele, and uh, tell us what, what your answer to this question is. Thanks, thanks a lot for, for raising this question and uh, for asking me to respond. And hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, clearly, uh, it, it has been touched on uh, various times this morning, closer, uh, this morning. Uh, and AMR is certainly a top public health threat, uh, but it has also very significant economic implications that are both direct and, and direct. Uh, we calculated uh, and we carried out this analysis in uh, collaboration with the CDC and for some countries also uh, with the WHO Europe uh, that uh, uh, there are more than 11 billion euros per year that are spent by uh, countries uh, to treat the consequences of AMR. Whether the, the, this is uh, uh, longer time in hospitals because patients require uh, a higher uh, support or whether uh, because it's a reduction in productivity. Uh, so the next step is uh, really to find a solution uh, to AMR. Some of the actions that we have already discussed this morning, stewardship programs, infection prevention and control, raising interest and uh, education in the general population uh, to help them making the right decision and avoid using AMR, um, antibiotics uh, when they are not needed, uh, are all effective and cost-effective policy actions to implement. Uh, one of the points that was raised by Danilo in, uh, in his talk uh, is that there is no sufficient funding uh, to uh, implement these actions. Uh, with the support of European Commission, we calculated uh, uh, that uh, it would take as little as an investment of 3.4 euros per capita per year to implement a One Health pro program, uh, which includes the options that I've already mentioned, plus uh, uh, intervention in the agri-food system to decrease significantly the burden that AMR is currently causing uh, uh, to our countries and economies. Uh, what is even better is that uh, uh, in face of these 3.4 euros invested, uh, countries could expect uh, a return of about 10 euros, so three times bigger, uh, in terms of uh, reduction in healthcare expenditure and improved workforce productivity. Thank you very much, Michele, thank you. We have a hand raised right here. If we could just bring a mic, would you mind just introducing yourself and uh, please share your question. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Sam Selikovic, representing Council European Dentists and most member of AMR One Health Network. Um, two questions. Um, one thing, we are really talking about a public health issues related to human health. And I wonder if one of you could address the more on prevention and even more from an Otto, Ottawa program, the health promotion issues which we have to use related to the prevention of the diseases. The also issue which I would like you to address more is the inequality. Inequality was mentioned by the animal health, not really by the human health. So human inequality is huge related to this issue and I would like maybe that you could address this. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll start with the first one on promotion. Maybe, who would like to take this question? <laughs> Danilo. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so this is all. No, uh, thank you for bringing it up. I think this is one of the things that we have been doing for a long time, but maybe we need to think about doing it in a, in a different way. Um, I think we've been trying to find one message that resonates with everybody, and I think it's really, really difficult. Um, 
the roadmap that I showed you is, is actually one big invitation for partnership, including on, on, uh, on raising awareness, on <clears throat> broadening the, the message, maybe reformulating the message also, because it, we're having difficulty reaching other people with, with, you know, as soon as we start explaining what it is we're doing and what we want, it becomes very technical very quickly. And, and if I may, we, this we is a conversation people. we had with, with you uh, from the commission as well. I mean, we discussed this very much. So. Yeah, no, abs absolutely. So um, putting a face or faces to, to AMR is, is one thing, reaching out to different health professionals that are usually not hurt, like pharmacists and dentists and others is another. Um, I think we need to find out, and, and for this we can use behavioral insight methodology, what resonates with whom? So what channels do we use? What messages do resonate so that we become a movement rather than, than uh, you know, talking about the issues and, and talking about what needs to be done? I think that's the first. Thank you. I was think the question on inequality, Laura, might, might be something for you. The, I yes, inequality could be in so many aspects, you know, from access, you know, to the current antibiotics, which, you know, Christine is an expert, she's here, she can talk lots about it. Uh, so we were trying to do efforts on that on that field. There's a lot of initiatives, and I think Jan Rai will play a role, an important role in this for, for the future, but also inequality in, in interventions and so forth. For example, the call that we have opened at the moment is on, on cost-effective interventions, comparison studies, and designing of new interventions from a global perspective. So, so we are really trying to work on, on identifying those interventions and how we can reach in high income countries and law settings and how we can work to how we can translate those key learnings and how we can standardize and how we can work together with with this region so this is part of a process that we have started but there's a lot of work to, to be done in the future yeah yes please yes go ahead yeah, just to, to answer your second part of the question um, the action areas that I showed the, the idea is to have platforms communication platforms for each and one of those and for the last one on access there's the Novel Medicines platform, which basically is a, a place where, where public and private and other stakeholders can come together and discuss access and equity issues. So this is something to, uh, to maybe to, to connect to and, and uh, keep an eye on. Thank you. And please, I, uh, panelists, grab the mic. If you, if you want to add something, feel free. Hi, Cecilia. Question for the, for the huge MI too. I think one strength is that we have 30 countries so all the 27 member states and plus Iceland, Norway, and Ukraine. And all these countries uh, has m have many differences also. And uh, that's a strength to really work together because you're totally right. Uh, AMR also, we know that AMR increases inequities and uh, specifically for some group of people, uh, children, women, migrants, refugees, etc. And so it's important to have these different cultures and institutions from all the 30 countries to have a coordinated approach. Thank you, Marie-Cécile. And would anyone on the panel like to add something for now? Shall we, shall we see uh, any? Yes, we have, oh, you have your microphone already. Yes, my name is uh, Jean Weimar. I'm Deputy Director for European and International Affairs at the French Ministry of Health, but I'm also coordinator of a new joint action funded by the EU for Health program to maximize the impact of the EU global health strategy. So uh, this is the issue of my question. This is the EU global health strategy and the, the place for the room for AMR uh, and all projects that you presented today in this strategy and the impact of our actions in this strategy. Uh, there will be several very important time points this year related to uh, IMR and, and, uh, and uh, their positioning in the global health, EU global health strategy. We have a summit with Africa uh, on the 20th of March in Brussels. We have also a summit with uh, EU and Latin, uh, Latin America countries and the Caribbean countries. So my question is, what could we do together with uh, uh, the project funded by the EU for health program, the joint actions? Uh, project funded by DG and TPA, the Team Europe Initiative, working on One Health and and uh, and uh, AMR also uh, with uh, countries from the south and Africa, for instance, but with other DGs such as DG uh, Horizon and uh, GPI uh, AMR project and uh, the new partnership uh, on One Health and AMR. The, this is really the question we need. Uh, um, 
uh, results, we need also to explain, to give a better uh, visibility of the global EU uh, strategy in the field of IMR that will feed uh, uh, our positions and uh, the, the, the way we are explaining what the European Union is doing uh, for the world and, and for global health. This is very important that you work together on these questions because if not, you know, there will be this year some uh, election, European election, discussion also on the future budgets, uh, the budget of the European Union in the field of IMR also. Um, and uh, if we are not able to provide uh, this uh, uh, proof and, and uh, explanation our actions and their impact, uh, then uh, uh, the future funding will be at stake for IMR. So my question is, what can you do together to uh, prove this uh, communication and explanation on uh, the impact of our actions? Thank you. Thank you for your question. We have Hein here. He, I saw you shaking your head. Tell uh, us. No. <laughs> is it working? Um, I, I, I may be not the best person to, to, um, to uh, answer your question, but I completely agree with, with your remark. Um, I, previously, I was uh, involved in the project One Health AMR, uh, sorry, One Health uh, EGP, which brought together people from across sectors. And um, it seems that, well, it, it turned out that the 44 partners were eager to work together, certainly the, the scientists, the, the researchers. But when it comes to, well, you have to know that this um, EGP was funded by agriculture side. And although it was a one health, it was very difficult to reach out to the, the, the health side. So it is, uh, it is a criticism and, and maybe the commission will blame me for that. But I think that the commission always thinks a lot in, in clusters, cluster one, cluster six, one health, six uh, uh, agriculture. And so, of course, we as researchers, we as coordinators of projects, we have an obligation to share what we come up with, the results with others. But I think there is also a need from the top to organize the, the bridges between the different initiatives that, that exist. And I would really encourage um, all actors in that, be it authorities, be it international, be it European, uh, whatever national authorities, to stimulate this, this um, and it will this collaboration. It will not solve the problems with, but it will facilitate. It is not only the researchers. You don't only have to look at the coordinators of projects, but we need an, a an, uh, an, a framework that facilitates this exchange. Thank you. Thank you, Hein. I, I was wondering, if perhaps Velina or, or Julia, do you have yes? Do you have maybe something to add? Yes, um, is it on? Yeah. I just want to come in on the international angle. Um, I think everything that you've raised, it's very important, very valid. Um, one thing we just need to consider, maybe as we're here today talking about the joint action, the joint action is looking in a way inward to the EU member states, and we have other funding mechanisms in place for these kind of outward, beyond the EU activities. Um, and I think it's a matter of communicating that, that we have, um, you know, we're contributing to other international processes at EU level. Um, but specifically on this joint action, which is part of the EU for Health program, and maybe Mark can also jump in <laughs> from Hadea, um, you know, the funding constraints are limited to a certain set of countries. That doesn't mean that we're not interested in, you know, looking at the more international dimension ongoing. Um, it's just kind of a bit the funding structure and how it's been set up, but we do have participation of other, of other countries. I'm looking at Norway, <laughs> for example, who are part of the joint action. So, you know, we need to move a little bit in the framework that we have and also contribute to the other um, ongoing international activities. But Lina, I don't know if you want to compliment or, yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Julia. Danilo. Yeah, mentioning the international aspects, of course, um, we have very close, collaboration and communication with with Helena and Julia uh, to be the sort of the, the channel between what is going on here and in the broader sense of the region and also globally. And of course, there's the quadripartite, but as Javier mentioned to you, um, there's a lot of goodwill, but there's also a lot of challenges to, to bring these big areas together. And at the same time, we should not, of course, forget that each area also has a mandate and an obligation to, to do what needs to be done. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of initiatives, uh, and it's a very crowded field. But I think the only way that we can we can we can move forward together is to 
is to coordinate more and, and to communicate more. And I, I think the quadripartite is, is, I guess, one logical partner for that, but certainly not the only one. And uh, as I mentioned before, we do welcome a lot of uh, partnership and we're still trying to figure out. Because I also think a lot of resources get wasted by trying to do similar things in, in different places. Um, and what we really need right now is to see examples of what worked. Uh, not so much more consortiums try to do this, the same thing, but actually, you know, spread the word like this is working. Why don't you try it yourself? One of the key words you mentioned is impact, uh, because we have to be pragmatic, and uh, we have to to really jump from the declaration to concrete action for the member states, for the citizens, and uh, I think we have to show the impact of the measures we are going to put in place. Uh, for, uh, I see Christine's over example for the access to antibiotics that could have a very huge impact. And so it's important to discuss, we have started to discuss uh, with the Juan Air's AMR partnership about impact and how we can interact in the impact uh, <coughs> part of the partnership with the action uh, uh, done in the, in the UJAMI too. But you're right, it's not easy, but we, we have to stay pragmatic, really. Thank you very much, Marie-Cécile. We have a, an online question here, which Sinead is going to read out for us. Yes, thank you. We have a question from Aksana Hagar in Sweden. Her question is for regarding funding. So to produce new antibiotics takes a long time. The tools we have today is definitely IPC. And, those that, and how are those who finance research, re research are going to promote more research in the area? Laura. Uh, it's working? Yes. Yeah. No, uh, exactly. So uh, that's why we have different uh, levels of funding for different areas, right? So because antibiotic nutrient development is, is very high resourceful, but we also fund research on IPC, especially in comparative studies, especially in different settings, also on the One Health settings. And so this is an area that we are funding right now. So the, the, the area that we have open at, at the moment. So. So we, when we talk about research, I think people just think about new treatment and new therapeutics, but, but we are really, when we talk about IMR research, we are really thinking of the full spectrum. And prevention is critical, you know, because probably the new, if we get new class of antibiotics in 10, 15 years from now, it's not going to be as good as the ones we have now. So this is, is critical to, to have more evidence on how we can, on, on the prevention area. Maybe just to add to that, I think, um Research innovation is extremely important, which is also why we define it as an enabling area. But at the same time, I think we also maybe need to research on, again, what works. And there's a lot of things we already know. So it is a, it's, not yet, it's not easy, but it's a matter of starting to implement what we know, figuring out and improving based on that. Um, because research always points out to more research questions, and that, that's the nature of it, and that's how it should be. But research on on actually doing things, implementing things, and finding out uh, what works and what doesn't, I think that's, that should be uh, the bigger focus and impact, as you say. So uh, we, we have been saying many of these things for a long, long time. And now it's actually time to, to try it out at scale and uh, see what we learn from that. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm being given the sign here that we are, well, we want to give you time. Oh, we have. Shall we take a last question from the room? We have a, a, a raised hand. This will be the last question, and then we're going to give you time to, to network and connect. That's also super important over lunch. Please. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and thank you to all panelists for a great, uh, great presentation. Oh, we've lost you. Yep. And discussion. My name is Sibilia Kulici. I lead uh, Vaccines Europe, which is part of the European Federation of the Pharmaceutical Industry and Associations, but focusing essentially on, the, on vaccines and vaccination. And we heard a lot this morning, and it was really interesting as well, the, the, the One Health approach and listening to uh, what is happening in the uh, animal health field, because the point on prevention but linked to vaccination is, is said, is mentioned, is, is, is worded. Uh, which is less the case, I found it less the case in the field of prevention in human health. So, uh, and, and we see actually the rise of and the value of vaccines and vaccination 
in reducing the spread of infectious diseases and per se reducing the misuse of antibiotics, those preserving their value, longe longevity and effectiveness. So I just wanted to ask the, the questions to, uh, to the panelists, how you foresee actually the rise and the value of vaccination for humans related to uh, uh, the role it can have uh, with regards to AMR and related to the joint action uh, on AMR too, how you foresee actually a more, um, in inclus more inclusiveness or maybe more a synergistic approach between prevention to care, vaccination and antibiotics rather than looking at it in silos, looking at it together and, and how they can actually play and bring together as well as solutions with regards to, to the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, sorry. yeah, just quickly, and I, I think the, um, my presentation was just a, a teaser, of course. There's a lot of, lot of elements and, and details in between which I invite you to, to look up and read. Vaccination was included in the action area of prevention and control as, as a very important uh, area, which was, I think, grossly uh, neglected in the global action plan. So a lot of the things that, that are in the roadmap are also to update on, uh, on areas that we know more of and need to include more, such as environment um, and, and vaccination. But also um, what was mentioned earlier by equity, there's also uh, uh, interventions on making sure that uh, refugees and immigrants have access to the, to the health system and everything that goes with it. So there's, there's more details where, uh, other than the diagram I just showed you. Would anyone like to, Marie, you see perhaps a closing word? Yeah, thank you. I I totally agree with you about prevention, and uh, um, Dominic showed how uh, important is the, the, the part of the healthcare-associated infections in, uh, in the AMR burden, so it's also prevention. So I perfectly agree with you, and it's um, for a long time we, we faced AMR without facing the prevention part. And uh, now, uh, for some years, it's, it's really intuitive. And I think this is the, the way to, to, to move uh, forward and, and to try to, to, um, yes, to solve a solution. And about vaccines, well, we cannot manage everything uh, uh, within the GeoGMI too, but we have discussed that also in the, in the access. And, uh, and obviously, uh, Vaccine Europe will be part of the stakeholder forum of the UGMI2, and it will be the perfect occasion to discuss with you and see the synergies. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. And you may be getting more answers also during the presentations this afternoon, where you're going to you know, hear about the very concrete action on the ground from the member states, the partners. So uh, there'll be a, a lot of time for Q&As and for interactive sessions this afternoon. A huge thank you to our panel. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you to you guys. You deserve a break. And to all of you online. It would be great if everyone could be back here at two. But before you go, everyone here, group photo right out there now before anyone, anyone goes off. We'd love to have a group photo of everyone. See you at two o'clock. <laughs>